I come to you today with my May wrap up. Um, it looks a little bit like I'm filming in a panic room. I'm not, it's just that we have moved recently and we haven't decorated everywhere yet. Um, but this has light. So yeah, here's my face illuminated. You're welcome. This month for me was dominated by Pierce Brown's uh, Red Rising Trilogy books two and three, which are Golden Sun and Morning Star. Took me a while to get through them just because they're quite long books, but also I was reading uh, Morning Star in hardback and I've not read a hardback for a while, but they are just like chunky and difficult to carry around. So I had to sort of wait until I came home and read it on night rather than if I've like got my Kindle and can just read things anywhere. This trilogy isn't really anything new, it's a caste system, people at the bottom trying to overthrow people at the top because the life's not fair, they want it to be more fair. I'll put a little wee link across the top, I've spoken about it before. Just, as much as it wasn't anything new, I really enjoyed it, I just really love the characters and it's really like twisty turny and there's some <gasps> moments and there was a lot of me speaking out loud whilst reading the book in a oh, oh no he didn't kind of way. <laughs> Minorly disappointed by the ending just because I think in these sort of big dystopian over three trilogies there can't be a, an ending, it's sort of this happened and then we continued on to try and make it better blah 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 um so that is mildly disappointing but there were still twists and turns some big moments i had a little cry which i didn't expect sort of like the political element of it and trying to sort of figure out what is good and bad and i thought that i would find some of um a brown's writing like preachy but it's not i just found it actually quite beautiful in places um which you kind of don't get from quite a few of these books in my opinion but yeah I would definitely recommend this series a whole lot of fun uh yeah go give it a try before that I read Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon Maguire which is a short book 200 and 200 pages maybe something like that and uh, about Eleanor West's home for wayward children which sounds very much like Miss Peregrine's poem for peculiar children or whatever that one's called I can't remember I didn't really enjoy that one but I really enjoyed this one. Eleanor Way's Home for Wayward Children is a school that is open but secretly open to children who have managed to stumble on doorways to other worlds and then stumbled back to our boring world um, and who just felt that they fitted in so much more to these other worlds than they did to here and are really struggling to integrate back into normal society uh, so their parents can send them to um, Eleanor West's, West's um, home and she's gonna try and like integrate them back but she's not really she's gonna try and help them find their doorways because she once found a doorway and she loved it there and knows what it's like to sort of have a little bit of your soul like ripped out and left somewhere else. This book has several sort of layers to it I suppose. I think a lot of people read it for the characters. There is an asexual protagonist which you don't find all that often and um, I don't identify in, in that way but from people that do I've heard quite um, sort of like positive reviews as how that it was conveyed. Just quite a lot of different types of people in this very short story and there's also a murder mystery element which let me down a little bit because I know that the book is about the characters and the worlds that are described in it and everyone really enjoyed the characters and the worlds and I did too but I love me a bit of murder mystery and that was the bit that just let it down a little bit for me. I couldn't sort of go the whole hog with five stars because Ah, I just I like a who done it and I wasn't really that impressed with who done it. So yeah. At the very beginning of the month I snuck in a really teeny tiny read which is The Secret Life of Walter Mitty by James Thurber. I don't know whether any of you have seen the film with Ben Stiller. I have and I really enjoyed it apart from a couple of cringy bits but got over it, it's okay. And enjoyed the book too. It's a really short read. Um it's like about 80 pages or something just about a guy who is just so sort of disenchanted with life that he makes up all these scenarios in his head but to such a way that he just like totally zones out of what is happening uh so much to uh, the annoyance of his wife and this is literally a little story of them going around the shops and him just zoning out and making up all these ridiculous um 
circumstances and scenarios in his head which I think we all do um, from time to time he just takes it one step further it's really like bittersweet I think because he's just he's so unhappy with his own life that he he can't stay focused it's uh, so, so kind of sad but but worth worth the 20 minutes that it takes to read so that was me in May I have officially now ended my book buying ban um, I'm still on the whole trying to get my TBR down and read all the books that I own but I went to Waterstones on my lunch today and saw some books and just kind of had to buy them and I did and um, these are them First we have Unspeakable Things, Sex, Lies and Revolution by Laurie Penny. Nice big uh, recommendation by Caitlin Moran on the front there. This is just sort of a feminist work about, yeah, boo, capitalist patriarchy and all that jazz. I mean, probably not quite as crudely as that, but who knows? Next, you might, you might notice there's a theme here. And the next one is, um, Female Chauvinist Pigs, um, World and the Rise of Raunch Culture by um, Ariel Levi. So this is about um, sexualization of women and how some women are sort of owning the sexualization of themselves, but how it can also sometimes be forced or have a negative effect and a positive effect. Discussion. And finally, How to Think About Sex More by Elaine de Botton. I mean, I don't I don't think I need to think about sex more. Well, maybe I, maybe I do. I don't know. I mean, I, I think about it quite a bit, I'll be honest. Um, but this is from the School of Life series, and this is more about how to think about um, sex differently. So it's just, um, I'll give you a little look at the um, contents page there. Um, so I get just discussion about attraction and sexuality and how we think about certain things. Um, why do we think about them in that way? Why are we so... Well, obviously we're so obsessed with sex because we need to keep the population going. That is like the point of life, isn't it? Recreate, reproduce, go forth and conquer. But yeah, cute little book. So them's my reads for June probably, but I'm crap at sticking to TBRs, so... Maybe not. Um, if you've read any of those or any of the books that I talked about that I read in May, then do let me know down below. I'm also really behind on the Feminist Orchestra book club, so along with the books I've just bought, I might try and catch up and just have a really like, rrr, lady power month for June. Why not? Let me know what you're reading, what you've read, what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy, and I'll see you next time.